But um, right now we're going to go to our guest, our candidates here. And we're going to start with Josh Cadena first, and he's going to go with his opening statement, and then followed by Brian Rosas. Josh, thanks thank for you. being here. Yeah, thank you. And uh, start off with your statement. Yeah, and thank you, and thanks for having us. Um, as you mentioned, my name is Josh with and I'm running for City Council District 2. Um, I grew up here in Corpus Christi, Texas. I'm born and raised. Um, I went to Miller High School, then Del Mar College, and then also a and Corpus Christi, where I graduated from. Um, while at Miller and growing up here, um, a few blocks away from Leopard Street, I was also a Boy Scout and became an Eagle Scout. And that's where I learned my, my first sense of duty and knowing that you could only grow through helping serve others. Um, professionally, I have served on the board of the National Association of Insurance and Financial Advisors, also the board of directors for the Young Business Professionals of the Coastal Bend. Um, I am I'm a leader, I'm a graduate of leadership Corpus Christi and also an honoree of Corpus Christi's top 40 under 40. And I, I very much love the city of Corpus Christi and believe in order to roll up your sleeves and be active and be motivated and be effective, you have to love what you do. And I have a passion for this city. And again, my name is Josh with Ijedina, your city council district two candidate. Thank you. Thank you, Josh. Next, uh, Brian Rosas. Uh, first of all, thank you, John, for having us. And uh, yeah, that show is going, going well. Um, well, first of all, my name is Brian Rosas, and I am, too, a district candidate, uh, District 2. I'm born and raised here. I'm a hometown boy. Um, I went to Moody High School, graduated Del Mar College, went to Texas A&M University, graduated there, and uh, took on more abuse and went ahead and went for the master program. Um, with that, I've been always a steward of uh, District 2, born and raised there. My parents' garage is actually 97 precincts. It's actually called the Rosa's Garage. So uh, we've always been involved with the community. My uh, dad is real big in the community, uh, including myself. Um, one of my biggest things I want to do, and I tell everybody, is uh, the endorsements have come out. And, and I want to appreciate, uh, say my appreciation for having the fire and police endorsement. But one of the biggest endorsement I would like to have is District 2, Just to tell them that I need the people's endorsement for District 2. I'm here for them. I'm open to new ideas. I'm, I'm uh, a servant for the community, and I look forward to working with everybody, especially carrying the torch that Mr. Modest had and Mr. Chad McGill. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Well, and that was going to be one of my next questions is to talk a little bit about our endorsements and, um, and, and explain to the people out there watching, the people, the residents of District 2, um, exactly what those endorsements mean to you, but most importantly, uh, how did you advocate to get or earn those endorsements? So Brian, we'll start with you since you last finished, and then we'll go to Josh. So endorsements, how, um, how, you, how you attach the to those? The first endorsement was the Corpus Christi uh, Police Association, Officer Association, um, and the second was the Fire Department. Um, basically working with uh, Scott and Carlos, talking, talking to them weekly, on a weekly basis, having meetings, discussing their issues. Uh, I know they have a lot of, uh, I know the police department will be up for a contract. Um, you know, I, I tell them all the time, I want that transparency. I want them to be able to come to their councilmen, talk to them, and, and know that I'm, I want that in our, in, on my side. Uh, safety first, first and foremost, safety and needs, and like I said, what, what a better place to get the safety of the fire and the police. I, I love calling and people showing up. That's one of the best things. Um, you know, as far as the, where I totally met them the first time was through the senior companionship program, which I was involved with for a little bit. Uh, I had to cancel because we ran, I ran for district, of course, but uh, senior program is a very good partnership with the Corpus Christi uh, Parks and Rec. It's, it's, it's a great program. Like I said, I highly suggest it. Those that need any help, feel free to call me. I'll, I'll direct you in the right, right way. Thank you. So those two, those are big ones. Yes. Any, any others? Yeah. Uh, neighborhoods first as well, um, okay. and and hopefully, like I said, uh, the big endorsement I want is District Two. Once they vote for me, that's the one I really want. Thank you. And Josh, uh, let's talk a little bit about your yes. endorsements and what um, they mean to you and what you're advocating. Am I mic good? I think you're good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You're good. Um, yes. Um, the first endorsement that came through was for the Builders Association, um, the Coastal Bend Area Builders Association. I was very honored and glad um, to get their endorsement. As we all know, economic development is a big a big issue here with our city. Um, we're looking at expanding, um, but especially in District 2, um, we have a lot of um, a lot of development to do within that core part of our city. Um, there are a number of, um, not only shopping areas, but also there's a few, um, more than a few homes in here that, are, that have been abandoned or just left in disrepair. And so as we know, the Builders Association, these people literally build our homes um, from the ground up. They build our, the foundation of our city 
um, is built upon. And so I was very glad and proud to get their endorsement. Um, then secondly came the Caller Times. Um, the Caller Times, um, the meeting went very well, and I believe they were just very um, focused on um, having somebody who was informed on the issues and who could answer their questions appropriately. Um, I, um, obviously that endorsement came out a couple of days ago, um, and they, they asked a range of issues going from um, the bag ban all the way to streets and also to what's most important to the people in District 2, and I was able to answer those questions effectively and appropriately, so I'm very glad and proud to have the endorsement of the Caller Times. Um, the Realtors Association is still outstanding. As far as I'm aware, they have, they have yet to endorse somebody, um, um, but I'm looking forward to it. And of course, you know, we have a little under a month uh, before Election Day, but uh, early voting starts in just, uh, what, a week? Two weeks. In two weeks, right? Yeah. Just uh, a little bit further on uh, into October. So uh, it's important that you uh, get informed on the candidates, and that's why I really appreciate you tuning in here to South Texas Politics, uh, your source for local debates. And we know a lot of times, especially with the busy ballot, it's tough to get some of those, some, uh, some of those, uh, important forums that we used to have. Like when I was on council, every time I ran, it was by itself. So we were very much the focus. And now when you're competing against the governor's race and county level positions and a bunch of judges, it, it's tough. And of course, a bunch of ballot issues as well. Uh, but I know you're making the most of it. And that's what we're trying to do here. And next week, we have some great uh, debates candidates set up for as well. And we'll talk a little bit about that later on. Uh, but let's, uh, let, let's talk a little bit about about the focus of the city budget. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the budget. Um, you know, some people are advocating for, you know, we gotta be pro-business. Others are saying, you know, uh, uh, needs over wants. Uh, so what is your approach? What is, when Josh, we'll start with you first. What is your approach in going on the first budget that you get to vote for, even though it'll be almost a year yeah, later? Year. Um, uh, but let's talk about that. If you're elected, how would you approach the city budget for 2015, 2016? Well, as you know, the city just passed a budget of almost, it's approximately $800 million. And so going forward, you know, um, I'm very excited to see what the change will be in that over, over the course of 12 months. Um, but needs um, over wants is definitely um, a necessity when you're, when, when you're doing any type of budget, from balancing your own checkbook to an $800 million city budget. Um, the wants do need to be looked at sometimes. You know, as we all know, um, tourism is one of our main economic drivers. And so when it comes to quality of life, many people do view those things as wants instead of needs. And you know, they are correct to an extent, um, but when it comes to needs, we definitely need to be, and I will be focused on looking at those first, um, because we need to look at where we're spending our money. And um, the city's budget, you know, it goes to, you know, provides salaries for you know, our police officers, our firefighters, city services, and those are all absolute necessities. And so, but I, do, I don't want that to completely overshadow um, you know, certain needs that will improve our quality of life. Brian, same question. How would you approach that first budget vote as councilman if elected? Well, I do have to agree that, you know, they have passed recently. Um, one of the biggest things we'd have to look at is the needs. I think infrastructure would definitely bring the businesses more than it would um, shine away. One, one of the biggest things we have um, is the roads. I mean, uh, unfortunately, companies just won't come here because of the roads, the infrastructure. Uh, one of the big things they, they wanted to pass was Destination Bayfront. And again, Corpus Christi is a sparkling city. It's a touristic place, but we, de we definitely need our police department, our fire department there to actually have the safety of the people first. And that's what people look at when they go to do the touristic thing. Um, they've also had the approach of staying that one more night. But again, how, how bad is it when the, when the streets you drive on, it's just it's not, it, it kind of kills your week or weekend. So my biggest thing is, you know, I know it's a year away, but I, I look forward to doing research and actually learning more about the process and, and getting the right money allocated for those things like that. But improvement is definitely necessary. I, we need to elevate what we have now instead of expanding. The expansion's gonna come, but we need to elevate from the ground up. Now, of course, you know, we're in football season, so let's stay with kind of uh, that vernacular, but we're, it's a little bit Monday morning quarterback. It's way past the Monday morning quarterback to say, looking at the destination bay from vote from almost a year ago and how it failed, pretty pretty hardcore. Uh, but you have been endorsed by a group that was opposed to destination bay front. Correct. Now, uh, obviously, you you in, in the endorsement process, you know, you were able to win them over to believe that you are their candidate. Will Brian Rosas, as a councilman, 
be more uh, uh, of, a, of that mindset, of that approach, saying we want to stay away from big ticket items like that? Uh, or is that something that you would entertain? Well, I, I think the biggest thing, John, and, and I'm sorry, I didn't know if that's the end of the question. No, no, sorry about that. Uh, the, the biggest thing we need to look at, though, is the constituents of my district first. I mean, uh, I tell everybody, I'm a steward for the district first and then citywide. But as far as a big project like that, you know, overwhelmingly lost. And I do understand the, um, the MO in the very beginning on what it was about. But the hard part about it was is that it just wasn't the time now. Now, like I said, uh, with Neighborhoods First, I'd, I'd be happy to discuss things and actually talk to them and actually see the realistic plan of it. But right now, we, we need to hit on real reality. The fact that it's not realistic to, to, to have such a big project like that. Uh, the maintenance, everything that's going to come back on the city and the taxpayers is just not our cup of tea at this point. Uh, again, back to the Monday night analogy, I, I do agree. Um, it, it was something that was, um, or it was not a, a need just yet. So, like I said, we're, we're bringing we're bringing people. We got Eagle Shell. Uh, we're on the cusp of something big, but again, we just need to capitalize on what we have right now before we go bigger. And Josh, same kind of question, same approach. Hey, your your supporters are would be be categorized a little bit more traditionally that were in favor of the des destination Bayfront, and, and is that something that is going to guide you if you are elected? I mean, to continue to look at projects or opportunities like that to open up, or do you think that the voters from last year kind of spoke? Uh, clearly and loudly and, and you would stay away from something like that? Well, they absolutely did speak clearly and loudly um, concerning that, that one project. And I think that's what we have to keep in mind. Um, Destination Bayfront was one project. And absolutely, you know, going back and analyzing it right now is almost, it's almost a moot point um, with, you know, I'm, I'm very focused on moving forward and the issues we're gonna face over the next two years. Um, you know, and those, you know, change probably sometimes month to month, um, but, um, there were many supporters of Destination Bayfront within District 2, as we know. And you know, and that would be my question, you know, how we could, one, serve our needs, but also when there's people who we know, um, they value tourism and they value quality of life. Um, whether it be Destination Bayfront or any other project that's gonna hit our Bayfront um, or hit our downtown area, um, where you know, most of our tourism, tourism dollars are gonna be found. Uh, you know, that's a question that the city councilman um, whether he views it as important or not, he needs to add, add, answer to both those factions. Those who may not believe a project like that is right now, and then those who actually do and believe in it. And he needs to understand what's important to both. Um, now that project, again, uh, we probably won't see it anytime soon, but there will be another one, whatever it may be. You know, quality of life and tourism is, is a focus. And so um, that would be the question I would ask. You know, how do we meet both of those needs of both, both people in that, in that district? Both of you are fathers. Mm -hmm. You both, you know, obviously looking towards the future opportunities here in Corpus Christi. And long before any of us have been to this point and long after we're gone, I, I think there'll still be a debate here in Corpus Christi as far as, you know, what opportunities are there for our kids to keep them here, uh, economic opportunities, jobs, just prosperity, quality of life. Uh, what would be your strategy? We'll stay with you, Josh, mm -hmm. and go to Brian. What would be your strategy in approaching all that quality of life keeping young people here and particularly your child or children or, or, or just quality of life what can we do that kids are going to want to be entertained and stay and, and grow up living here in Corpus Christi well um, as we know I mean our main economic drivers right now um, are the oil and gas industry tourism and healthcare and so we need a we need to diversify our economy you know those, those are the three main drivers and right now when kids growing up you know and when they're when they're looking at where to live when they're in high school in their 20s a big part of it is a school they're going to go to and so right now um a m corpus christi is looking at um, becoming an emerging research university they want to increase their funding for graduate programs and when i think of my son growing up i want him to stay here because i want him to go to college here and i want those programs that the university is developing to bring in companies within those specific industries okay so that we can diversify our economy and our economic drivers even though the oil and gas industry healthcare, and tourism are great they absolutely are but we need to create a diverse field um, for our, our children to choose from you know, when they're going, looking to go into college and, and grad school um, we want our students to stay here because the, um, those things are here there was nothing wrong with leaving Corpus Christi because they find a program that they like elsewhere there's absolutely nothing wrong with that but we want to make sure that they have enough college and graduate programs here to choose from so that they're not forced to go anywhere else. And so when I, if I have to give you the short answer that I will look at making sure our university has everything it needs to offer our children.
Brian, same thing for your daughters and your the rest of your family? Yeah, uh, well, I, I would have to uh, say I am married, yes, and I do have a blended family. Uh, actually I actually have four grandkids, so I'm pretty vested here, John. Um, but to, to, to start off with that, I, I mean, my biggest focal point would be jobs, jobs, jobs. Um, one of the biggest things that we, we do have a, uh, a huge growing economy here, we just have to capitalize on somehow. Uh, whether it's refer, uh, refurbishing what we have, the infrastructure, again, I, I tell everybody we have to elevate what we have. That's the best thing to do. We talk about certain um, uh, facets of, of the university being here, and we do have an aeronautical program that's doing now with the drones. Uh, I myself work out at the base, so it, it's good to see that technology moving this way, but we need to capitalize. We need to make sure those businesses come, and, and the, only way, the only way they'll be coming, coming down to Corpus Christi is that we have the safety first, the roads, and everything else that goes along with it. The tourism is already here. So I, I do believe in that. And like I said, I would have to say jobs is a big thing right now. Um, then people won't leave because the, the uh, as you all know, I mean, we're all graduates of uh, the Islander University. So like I said, uh, it's a good educational base, but it definitely uh, could, could help with uh, having more jobs around here so people could stay. This is a tough question. It may not be fair, but I'm going to ask it anyway. <laughs> Let's, uh, we'll stay with you, Brian. Um, Name one item, one vote, one issue that the council got it right, and one that maybe they didn't. And you don't have to say they got it wrong, but maybe they just did it, and we'll go with you. Uh, one they got right, or one they, I Or don't, if you just feel there's, they only got one thing I, right, only I, one I thing think, wrong, um, you, however you want to answer. Well, this sounds like a Renee question, but I would definitely say <laughs> that I would I would have to say that a street user fee had, had to be looked at a little more, and that's the reason why it was tabled, or will be tabled. Uh, that's one of the things that, definitely needs to come back on the table. I think uh, people um, were upset about it, but you know, again, we have Prop 1, Prop 2 that are coming out. The, the voters need to be uh, aware of the issues and, and what, what the actual um, percentages are you're paying and not paying so that before, because it, it's, just, uh, it's just a bad rap every time we put it in a bond election. So uh, I'd have to go with that, but okay. I'd say uh, street user fee probably. Street user fee, okay. Yes, Joss, same question. One yeah. right, one wrong, or yeah. just one of the other? Well, you know, um, I'm, I'm going to have to say I, I agree with Brian. And the street user fee is something that um, in many forms may have been a necessity. Um, but again, very, very unpopular. And I think um, the fact that it had to have been, had to be a necessity is something that many of us aren't happy with. We, we want to be able to bring in dollars from elsewhere instead of our own pockets. And, you know, that's what a lot of the voters are asking for. You know, um, we, we, we need to be able to allocate our money more appropriately so that we don't have to go to the voters for every single little thing. And um, again, even though on many levels it could be seen as necessity, um, now, uh, one that I would have to say that I, have, you know, agree with. Um, you know, putting um, this the, the bond for the parkland on the ballot this year. Uh, you know, we have a lot of parks um, that the city is looking at uh, sunning off and reclaiming. Now, um, one of those is located in District Two, and and I looked at it, and you know, the park that's gonna that's gonna be on there, I believe it's I could get the name wrong. I want to see it's easily it's somewhere near Staples and Baldwin, uh, if I'm not mistaken. It has four more parks in, in less than two square mile radius. Okay. And you know, even though it may be an unpopular idea, again, if you're for economic development, and especially for anything within our district, that is actually a good idea. Okay, so I hope that answers your question. Okay, one of the things that I find very interesting, I mean, I think sometimes we get ideas when we um, go out of town, we come back in town, and we're like, especially when we're out of town, we say, dang, this should be in Corpus, man, this should be in Corpus, and then you come back and it's not Corpus. So one of the things in visiting of course, our great country, um, I've encountered is something not being developed here that's somewhere else. Um, North Beach, it's got a lot of potential, but it just sits there with nothing there. That used to be off district, but you still play a role in that. Um, any idea what could become of North Beach? Yeah? We'll start with the first. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna agree and disagree with you. Okay. You know, um, of course, more can always be done. You know, it doesn't matter what kind of what kind of land you're looking at. More can always be done. We could always, things can always go from good to better to best. And you know, North Beach it has a Texas State Aquarium, it has a Lexington. You know, um, it, it has um, a number of good restaurants, and you know, it has a lot of beach land that's that's used consistently throughout the year. So even though it may not be 
you know, a beach you might find on the West Coast. You know, here in Corpus Christi, it's incredibly popular, all right? Now, uh, I'll be the first to say, you know, whenever you're coming from out of town uh, and visiting another city, you know, you, you get excited, you know, you, you get, um, because you're in a new place and there's new things that we don't have. But we also have to remember when people come and visit Corpus Christi, they're leaving town thinking the same thing. Why can't we have that type of beach in our town? Or why can't we have, you know, that aquarium or the Lexington where I come from? So I do think, you know, we should reevaluate it and make it better than what it is. But I, I'm going to disagree and say we still have a good thing in our pro right there on North Beach. Okay, Brian Wilson. <clears throat> well, again, being one voice, one district, um, I'd like to really work with the District 1 and see what, what kind of ideas they had, uh, the people have for that district. Uh, North Beach, like you said, was redistricted before, kind of kicked us out of there uh, downtown. But it, one, of, one of the biggest things that we've uh, talked about is the Lexington and the Aquarium. Those are two tourist attractions that come, people come to show up. Um, I know recently that the Texas State Aquarium was uh, bought out, I think, by somebody else, and it's supposed to expand, get a lot bigger. So that's a good thing. I mean, the, the, the business aspect of it is growing. But uh, to capitalize on the tourism, I, I think a lot could be done over there. One of the biggest things of Corpus Christi is still one of the only beaches we could drive on. So, and, and granted, not North Beach, but the other beach. Um, you know, those kind of things can definitely be capitalized on. I mean, I, so I, I would agree. I would agree that uh, if when elected, we definitely need to look at that area. If it's something that can uh, have a little more room. I'm like thinking South Beach, Miami, guys. There's, that's, <laughs> I mean, it's night and day, so, but who knows? Maybe one day after I'm dead, um, that'll end up happening. So, um, no, it's going to probably be in about four years. But anyway, okay, we'll start with Brian. And that was a question that came from somebody else. Okay. And this goes to both y'all. Annexation of land, Chapman Ranch. You may be voting <coughs> on this very controversial issue. Correct. How are you voting the issue? Uh, well, a annexation in general, I'm for. That particular, no. I mean, uh, it's just not, it's nothing viable at this time. Like I said, elevate what we have first, Renee, before we go on and, and uh, you know, we, we gotta get out of the concept of build and they will come. Uh, you know, that, that just doesn't work anymore. We need to make sure we gotta give the voters what they want. Um, you know, uh, we talked about bond issues and, and things, money that's left over and they start another project. You know, no, no disrespect to the council now, but it's, it's time for a change, and I'm here to mix it up. I'm here to bring in some new ideas, new, new, uh, a new swag, if you will. That's what I'd like to bring, and, and, and like I said, I, I would vote no at this time. Okay, Mr. Theodine. Well, um, remind me of the question, annexation of the South Side. The annexation okay. of the Chatham yeah. Ranch. Yes. Um, I think it's definitely something that needs to be looked at, and, I'll, and I have to say, you know, I, I take a little bit of issue with, with people who say, I, I like this idea, you know, but not now. I think it's good, but not now. Um, because that, that tells me that somebody is not willing to tackle that difficult issue right now. As you said, you know, it, it's controversial, um, but we need, to, we need to think long term for our city. And I, I really don't think this is, a, this is an issue of if they build it, they will come. It's they're coming. We need to build it, okay? Um, Corpus Christi is, is getting a major influx um, of residents and population right now, you know, and that's expected to rise, you know, with the housing market, you know, can't keep up with, with the demand, all right? And so these people are coming now, all right? And so we definitely need to, to look at um, growing our city, and right now, the, you know, the, the people are thinking part of that resolution is annexation of land so we can develop it. Uh, it's part of investing in our future, and so I think that it's not a bad idea. A lot of people may not think it's the greatest idea right now. Um, we, we almost, I want to say, have no choice but to look at doing that. So um, the people are coming. We have to build out somewhere. Um, so and right now, so people think that's the greatest place to do it. So I say, all right, let's look at it. Um, so I think these, these issues that are controversial cannot just be pushed aside with it's a good idea but not now we need to talk about these things now and this just needs to be made now okay so let's make that straight uh let's make a little fun here. okay where do you and we'll start with mr thea in a first where do you how are you different from your opponent mr rosens how do you distinguish yourself from him 
Well, I have to say, one, he's not a bad guy. <laughs> um, I've run into him a few times now. Um, but I'd like to think I'm a little bit more informed. You know, I, I, you know whenever I get involved in anything, you know, I, 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 I go in head first. And I, I, I like to study and do my homework. Now, I don't commit everything to memory. Um, you know, I, that's why I brought this portfolio here full of, full of notes and data. Um, but I like to make an educated decision, all right? Uh, whether it's a popular decision or not, I like to make an educated decision. And so I like to think that I'm more informed. Um, I've also been block walking a lot in the district. And I have to say, um, every there's at least one door that I knock on. When, and, I, and I've been doing it every single weekend since the end of August. I'm the first guy to have knocked on their door. Okay? And so I'm taking the time to do the legwork, one, on the data side, and, and, and you know, see what I can pull, you know, to. Uh, so I could be an, inf an informed candidate, but also listening to the people and the residents in that district one-on-one. -on -one. Because at the end of the day, we could, ta we could talk budget, we could talk annexation, we could talk economic development all day long. But the people who are voting for me, they, they want me to know what's important to them. And sometimes that is lease loss. Sometimes that's code enforcement. Sometimes that is streets and infrastructure. Sometimes it's a firefighter and he, and he, wants, to, he wants to talk about what's important to him right now. So I believe that I'm better informed and I'm actually more in touch with the residents than anybody else right now. Okay, Ryan, what's that? Uh, well, I, I would have to disagree on a lot of that. Uh, just because, first of all, born and raised in District 2, I'm pretty much a hometown boy. I, I know it all. Uh, I don't need to go out and research on what the problems are when you can drive down the road and see them. You can walk out your front door and see that the streets are bad. <clears throat> we also have to keep in mind though, they're on a fixed income, so it's real hard for us to go about and say, hey, I'm raising money for me to be elected. One of the biggest things I tell everybody is that we need to stop and look at the person. Understand that work 40 hours a week. You know, political aspirations are there, but they're also part of being a steward for D District 2. Um, I'm a family man. I'm vested. I have four grandkids. They're going to live in Corpus Christi. Now, what are we gonna to do to keep them here? That's the biggest thing. So it's not so much that the build and they will come aspect of it, but it is, what is reality? What is the real touch of the people right now? I go to groups all the time, I talk to people all the time, and they, they say the same thing. I'm the first person that's knocked on the door. I'm the second person that's knocked on the door. It doesn't matter. The stewardship is stewardship. I, I commend Mr. Tejerina for running, but I tell everybody, as far as the best candidate, that's me. It's a no-brainer. We've, we've, had, we've had the discussions. We've talked about education. I furthered myself, was married, <laughs> you know, and went to school. I mean, those are tough things. 40 hours a week, that's tough. But again, I'm up at the uh, midnight oil, you know. I, that, that's me. I, I read things all the time. So I don't need a portfolio to go through my notes. I listen to people. I know exactly what it is. It's always... Um, a little bit of uh, nervousness, I think, because not all of us are well versed in uh, talking about what we're wanting to talk about. But I tell everybody, I'm the person for them. That there's a reason why I'm running, um, and it's to be a voice of District Two, um, and that's that's the best way I can tell you is to be the voice. Well, gentlemen, I thank y'all for coming out here. Before we conclude, though, I want to give you each a minute closing <clears throat> statement to appeal to your audience. And we'll start with Ryan Rosas first. Okay, uh, first of all, I just want to tell you, uh, thank you for having me on the show. I am glad to see it up and running. Um, the um, this show is very informative. It tells people who, who put a face on the person's name. It's not just a sign. Um, go out and vote. Early voting is October 20th to the 31st. I know it's Halloween, but get, get your friends out there. I recommend everybody to go out there and understand that I'm here for me, <clears throat> Brian Rosas, my family. District 2, uh, born and raised, hometown boy, I'm married, I tell everybody I'm the average hardworking guy. I roll up my sleeves every day, I go to work, and we talk politics. That's the biggest thing I want everybody to know. It doesn't matter what, what possible um, entities there may be, but we're going to discuss it first before we make a great decision. Thank you. I'm number one on the ballot. Thank you. Brian Moses. Mr. Theodore. Yes, again, my name is Joshua Tijerina, your candidate for District 2. I'm number two on the ballot. Um, again, I very much appreciate your vote. 
Um, I have a long record of being involved in the community being, and being effective and also being a leader. And remember that, you know, and I, I, I have the record to back it up. You know, I've, I've helped, you know, and volunteered, you know, paint curbs downtown with the downtown management district. You know, I've helped paint and revitalize the water garden. You know, I've lobbied in Austin with you know, Corpus Christi for more money for a university. And um, I've, uh, I have a history of being involved in the community because I care, I'm motivated, and I love our city. And again, if you want somebody who's gonna roll up your sleeves, you need somebody who has to be passionate about it and has to have a record of already doing it. And that candidate is me, Joshua Theodino.